Rich Lund, and welcome to another episode of Indie Labs, where we put the science in your hands. I am very excited to bring you this episode. Something so cool about science is that as you learn different pieces of it, you can start to eventually see how those pieces fit together, how connections are made. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do today, and we're going to learn a whole lot more about electrolysis and acid-based chemistry. Way back in Indie Labs number four, we explored electrolysis using a 9-volt battery. You might want to go back and check that one out if you haven't yet. We used electricity to split water into its two elements, hydrogen and oxygen. By the end of the experiment, we were able to conclude that hydrogen gas was emanating from the negative terminal of the battery, and that at the positive terminal, that's where oxygen gas was being produced. But wait a minute, now that I think back on it, there's a few questions there that never really got answered. Like, how does the water know which terminal to do what at? Or, once oxygen's produced, well, what happens to that hydrogen that's still there from the water molecule? Does it just somehow know to go to the other terminal and bubble up there? There really is a whole lot of unanswered questions here. Well, now that we've been talking about acid-base chemistry, and we showed you in Indie Labs number 20 how to make an indicator solution, that can actually be used to shed some light on these questions. First, though, we got to explain a little bit more about what acids and bases are down at the atomic level. So there are many different definitions about what qualifies as an acid or a base. We're going to deal with a really simple basic one here. <laughs> it's, it's really tough to avoid the puns when you're talking about this topic. Anyway, in a lot of cases, we can just say that an acid is any chemical that causes more hydrogen ions, H plus 1, to be in solution. So molecules that give up hydrogen ions when they dissolve in solution, those would be acids under this definition. And really with acids, it's all about that hydrogen plus ion. That's really what makes acids, acids. For chemicals that are bases, it's all about this other ion, the hydroxide ion, OH with a negative one. Chemicals that can be considered bases are ones that when they dissolve, they provide more hydroxide into the solution. Whether it be because they themselves have given up that hydroxide, or they've done some chemistry to the water to turn the water into hydroxide. In either case, for bases, it's all about hydroxide in solution. And something else now you might notice is that if acids and bases get together, well, that's a hydrogen ion and a hydroxide ion coming together. And that makes a water molecule, just plain old water. This is why we say acids and bases are able to neutralize each other. All right, so if you would, keep all that in mind. And now, let's get into the experiment. Here's what you're going to need. You need an indicator solution, like the red cabbage juice that we made back in Indie Labs number 20. Still got some of that around? You'll need a 9 volt battery, two rubber bands, you want a small, very shallow dish, either white or see-through so we can put something white underneath it. And for me, really just the lid off of the yogurt that I tend to eat works great. And then also, many people will do this with stainless steel screws or nails, doesn't matter which. But the thing is, how many of you have stainless steel screws just lying around? I know in my junk drawer, they tend to be either carbon steel or galvanized, and neither of those work for this. So that's why I'm actually going to use pencil lead graphite, just from your standard number two pencil. If you're willing to break apart that pencil and get the lead out of it, it works even better than stainless steel for this. Point is, you can use either. I just kind of like the extra MacGyver flair that it adds when you use the pencil lead. Alright, here we go. Let's get into it. Okay, first up, you're going to put rubber bands around your battery. The first one needs to be wrapped so that way it's on the terminals. And the second one gets wrapped 90 degrees from that. So the other way. You're making a little cross there between the two terminals. Next, as I'm showing you here, place either your screws or your pencil lead so that way they are in contact with the terminals but being held down by the rubber bands. There you go. There's your 9 volt electrolysis device. Now pour indicator solution into your dish. If you're using a dish that's deeper than mine, you actually don't want it too deep. If it's too dark in color, you won't easily be able to see color changes happen. Once your indicator solution is in there, place your electrodes at the edge of the dish. And just lean your battery there and let the electrolysis take place. See if you can notice any initial observations. This is our same setup just five minutes later. Are you noticing something? We have some color changes going on, and it's going to be important to take note of which color changes are happening at which terminal. You can see on the side of my battery here, the positive terminal is labeled for us. So this one's the positive. The other one then is the negative. Notice which colors are showing up there. Now don't forget, as we learned in Indie Labs number 20, with this indicator solution, pink is actually indicating an acidic solution. And that green color is indicating for us a basic solution. Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? That's what's cool about our indicator solution. It can actually show us that there's a lot more chemistry happening here than we previously thought. 
All right, let's talk about these results. So in doing it this way, we are now seeing evidence that in the electrolysis of water, there's actually an acid-base situation going on here. Let's go back to one of those questions that we had. Something that we were wondering about is after the oxygen leaves the water molecule and bubbles out at the positive terminal, well, what happens to these two hydrogens? How did they know to go over to the other terminal and bubble out over there? Well, let's remember, when that indicator solution turns pink, that's showing us evidence of an acid, which we now understand is really just hydrogen ions. So really, it might be more correct to say that after the oxygen leaves and bubbles away, well, those hydrogens that are left, they don't bubble out, they just stay in solution as hydrogen ions. That makes a lot more sense. Okay, so what about over at the other terminal, the negative one? That's where hydrogen gas is being produced. If the two hydrogens leave the water molecule, what happens to that oxygen atom? But what we're seeing now with the indicator is evidence that a base is being produced there. That's hydroxide. That's OH. But actually now with this new information, it makes a lot more sense if just one of the hydrogens is leaving and bubbling out. The other hydrogen stays with the oxygen to form hydroxide. And that's why we are seeing a basic solution develop at that terminal. Turns out there's a whole lot more going on in water electrolysis than we originally thought. Now, I don't know about you, but I find that thrilling in science. Whenever previously unrelated topics actually shed light on each other, show that there's connections there, and help us understand one or the other better, and shows us that there's more to learn. We might think we fully understand something pretty well, but there could be a whole lot that we don't understand about it yet, and don't even know that we don't understand it yet. That's exciting. It lets us know that there's so much out there just waiting to be discovered. And if you stick with science, who knows? Maybe you will make one of those discoveries. So hey, Indie Labbers, if you learned something new, if you enjoyed doing this, please give it that thumbs up like. It always helps out. And subscribe to the channel for some upcoming experiments headed your way. I'm Rich Lund, here to say that the discovery's out there. You gotta go find it. Catch you next time. Investigation, the data's in worldwide As decades go by, sea level on the rise Climate be changing, want us changing the station Denying the nation while the temperature climbs So can you feel that? Feel the mic feed your feedback While the powers that be attempt to strap us with the feedback Alternative facts, signature of a host Signature of an emperor in need of new clothes Resistance, we got it in droves